AWS recently launched their container support for lambdas in their annual reinvent conference last week. In this video, we are going to take a look at how can we containerize a Python application and run it inside a lambda. I'm going to show you the architecture first. Based on the architecture, we'll be doing the hands-on and deploying it inside an AWS account. Obviously, I'm going to be the user. I'll be uploading a file into an S3 bucket. Based on the S3 file upload, I'm going to trigger a Lambda using event bridge. And from the Lambda, I'm going to read the file which I uploaded and log it into the console. In order to do this, I'm going to leverage Python as a language for reading the file and then logging it in the console. I'll be containerizing the Python application using Docker. And I'm going to leverage the latest image from AWS, which is the public image for Lambdas. And I'll be uploading these Docker images into the Amazon Elastic Container Registry. In my earlier videos, you would have seen me uploading it into Google Container Registry and GitHub Container Registry. But in this video, I'm going to do that using Amazon ECR. Once it's uploaded to ECR, obviously the Lambda is going to get its image from there. I'll be uploading that using the CLI commands again. And obviously the Lambda will get triggered or the Lambda will get its code from the ECR. Earlier, I would have shown you Lambda is getting the code from the S3 bucket. So the source code also resides in the S3 bucket. The file also gets uploaded to S3 bucket. Now our source container is going to be present in the ECR and Lambda is going to be taking the image from ECR and have it in its repository. Obviously, finally, I'm going to use CloudWatch to monitor the logs. This is what we are going to do in this particular video. If this video still interests you, let's get started. Press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss any update from Tech Primers. I have my AWS CLI already configured. So if I do a AWS S3 LS, I should not see anything right now. But my AWS CLI is configured from my laptop. I have Docker running. These are the prerequisites for this particular demo. I also have my IntelliJ open. I'm going to create a new project, uh, which I'm going to call it as Python Containerize. I'm just going to create two files. One is the Docker file and also the Python code, which I want to run at runtime. So I'll create this folder and let me open it in IntelliJ. I have preloaded the text for the Docker file and also for the Python file. So I'll be creating lambda.py. That's the file I'm going to execute in the Lambda. So I'm calling it as lambda.py. I have preloaded the code for the Lambda already into the IntelliJ editor. So that's why you saw that this code got automatically injected. I'll just explain what this does. I'm going to use the Boto3 library, which is by Amazon, which is the SDK for Python libraries for Python code. I'm going to use the Boto3 to read the S3 bucket. The bucket name is going to be called as TP data bucket. So I'm going to create a bucket name, which is called as TP data bucket. And I'll have a file inside the bucket called tpdata.txt. I'm going to read that particular object and I'm going to iterate that particular file. I assume that this particular file has JSON content and using the JSON content, I'm extracting two different fields. One is called name, the other one is called ID. So I'll be printing both of these particular fields. So I'm going to create uh, the data file. So I'll create it and keep it here, tpdata.txt so that uh, I can upload this into um, GitHub and you can directly take it from there. So I have this JSON here. So this is the text file and I have the Python file as well. So that's all we need. So this is going to be running inside Lambda. I also require um, the Docker file. So I'm going to call this as Docker file. So inside the Docker file, I'm going to use this particular image called public ecr.aws slash lambda slash python 3.6. This is a public image which is published by Amazon. Amazon also announced that they are launching public container registry. And as a part of the same launch for Lambda containers, they have enabled it. So I can now host an image or I can leverage AWS's public image and I can pull that. So this particular image, uh, which is specific to Lambda for running Python runtime, I can use it in my local as well. So I'm just using that. I want to copy my Lambda.py file, which is here into the machine so that's what we are doing here and finally i want to call this method called lambda.handler and that's what we have inside this particular file so i'm calling this handler method and this piece of code will be executed after that 
that's all we need so this is what we have from the coding perspective uh, i need to containerize this particular application so in order to containerize the application i'm going to leverage docker for it so i'll just say docker build and where is my docker file it's in the current folder and i'll uh, name this particular uh, tag as python hyphen containerize version one so version one is the tag and i'm going to call this particular image name as python hyphen containerize so i'll just build it okay i think i'm not in the current directory let me go to the python hyphen containerize directly so i'll do it to a clear so i'll run the same command docker build hyphen t python containerize v1 this should now build my docker image so let's build that So the image got built successfully it happened very quickly because it's just only one python file and already my base image got downloaded so that's why it got completed very quickly now once my build is successful i'm going to tag this particular image now before pushing my image into the ecr i need to log in so before doing this right now we built it now we need to upload and uh, push it into the ecr before doing that i want to create a repository so i can create it via the console or i can do it via the CLI as well. So I'm going to use it via the CLI. I'll be saying AWS ECR create repository and then the repository name as Python containerize. I'll also be mentioning the image scan configuration, which I'm going to say as scan on push. So this will scan my image for any vulnerabilities. And finally, I'm mentioning the region specifically for this particular repository. So I'm creating this repository. So once the repository is created, so if you notice the repository got created, I can navigate to the console. So let me go to the console. Uh, if you noticed uh, recently, AWS has updated their search here and it looks neat. Uh, if you notice here, I can directly go to the repositories from ECR and you can also see that this particular repository just got created. It's just like 1223. Yeah, just got created now. Now inside the repository, there is nothing. There are no image tags. I'm going to push that particular image which we built now. So I'll just say Docker push and I'll push my V1 uh, Python containerize tag. So let the push succeed and we should be able to see the image in this particular console here. A few moments later. Meanwhile, we can go and create the S3 bucket. So I'm going to create a new console. So I'll go to the S3 service and we need to create a bucket called TP data bucket. That's what we have mentioned in the code. So I'm going to mention tp data bucket as my bucket name because that's what i mentioned i don't want to have anything i'll just create the bucket directly notice one thing in the architecture diagram we need to have a role for the lambda to read from the s3 bucket so once the lambda gets created using the lambda role i need to assign the s3 bucket read role so i'll do that in a bit so right now we have created the s3 bucket so which is good uh, we need to also create a lambda. So once the ECR image upload is successful, we can create our lambda. So meanwhile, let me go to the lambda and keep it ready. So if you click on the create function inside lambda, there is a new option here, which is called as the container image. So this container image is going to now pull all my image from the ECR. In order to pull my image and then show up as an option, I'm going to click on the container image and notice that there are names here and you also have an option to browse your image so right now i'm going to name this particular uh, function as let's say python containerize lambda still my upload is happening it's pretty slow i'll have to upload my image here using the browse image option but meanwhile let's go and check the permission here right so you do you want to create a new role yeah i'm going to allow lambda to create a new role and on that role i'm going to assign the s3 read permission so let this particular lambda create a new role and then i'll assign the read permission for s3 one eternity later finally the push got succeeded let's come back to the lambda function and i'm going to click on the browse images this should now show me the image uh, meanwhile let me go back to the image and then just double check if the image is showing up we uploaded a v1 tag and uh, it's showing up here so let me come back here i'll select the python containerize 
repository and I can see my image tag here. So let me select this particular image. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, I'm going to allow Lambda to create a new role so that I can assign my S3 role to it. So let me click on create function. The create function now is going to download all the container image from this ECR and keep it inside my Lambda function. So every time you upload a new version of your image into ECR, Lambda will not automatically pick it up. You will have to manually update it inside your Lambda function. So make sure you know that. Now, once the function is created, we need to plug in the trigger point. So in the diagram, as I show, the trigger point for this is the S3 bucket. So let's do that. I'm clicking on the add trigger option. In the trigger option, I'll select S3 as my source. I'll be selecting the bucket which we created, which is the TP data bucket. And what are the different types of events? I am just mentioning as for all events right now. But if let's say you want to create um, events only for files which are getting created, you can definitely do that using post or put. So right now I'm just leaving it as such. Uh, I'm not changing anything here. Finally, I acknowledge whatever option is here. I'll click on add. So this will add a trigger point to the Lambda and I don't have any output as such or any destination where I'm going to write. It's just logging into the console. So I can just leave this part here. Now my Lambda function is done. My ECR is done. All these are done. The final part which is pending is the S3 bucket read access. So I need to go to IAM for it. I'm going to go to IAM. So inside IAM, I'm going to go to roles. So for the Lambda execution role, which we just created, which is uh, the Lambda was called as uh, Python containerize. So that should be the Lambda role. So this is the Lambda role. Right now, if you see it's serving only Lambda execution role, I'm going to attach my policy to do S3 read. So I'm going to allow S3 reads for this particular role. So that's when I'll be able to read the file from S3. So done. So I have attached the policy to the role and we should be good. Now I can directly upload the file into the S3 bucket so that an event notification will get created and Lambda will be executed and it will be reading the S3 bucket and it will be logging. So let's do that. I'll go to the console. So we already had the file locally, which is tpdata.txt, I believe. I'm going to copy this through S3 bucket tp data bucket slash tp data dot txt. I'll just double confirm if that is the file name. Let's go to the tp data dot txt tp data bucket. Yeah, that's right. So let me upload this particular file. I just noticed that I did not do AWS S3 copy. I just blindly did a CP. So I'll do a CP data dot txt s3 colon double slash i'll paste the same thing so this should copy the file from my local into the s3 bucket once the s3 bucket gets triggered i should go to cloudwatch to see my cloudwatch logs i'm navigating directly to the cloudwatch logs so that i can look at my new cloudwatch group let's go to the logs group uh, yes i can see the new log group and if I go inside the log group, I can see the log stream. Let me go to the log stream. I can see that the values Ryan and Chris got printed along with the Lambda execution completed message. So that's what we added inside the Lambda. Um, where is this here? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a print statement to show you how to update the Lambda. So it's not that easy, right? I mean, obviously, when you do a version two, you will have to again update the Lambda. Right. I'm just going to show uh, complete. Uh, I'm just going to show welcome to tech primers. So I'll build a new version, which is V2 and let's try uploading and then see what are the different steps which are involved in doing that. So I'll just say Lambda build. I'll do V2. This is going to build a new image. Uh, the only slow thing is going to be our upload, but I'm OK. I'll fast forward it. I'm going to tag next. After the build is completed, I'm going to tag my version, which is going to be called as V2. I'll do a Docker push, which is going to be V2. Since all the other layers exist, I think my push got succeeded very quickly, right? Now, let me go to the ECR and let me double check if the image version is present here. 
yep i can see my v2 image present so i should be good i can now go to my lambda let me open lambda i'll go to lambda and now if i re-execute if i upload the file i won't be able to see the new image so let me do that and show you guys if i upload the same file again i will not be able to see the latest code change because i did not update my image here so if you see here image uri is constant so this needs to be updated so i need to do a deploy new image if i don't do that what happens is my old code will be executed and it will be shown so let me show that for you so by this time the see this the lambda got triggered again uh, earlier it was in 26 seconds now it is 36 38 seconds this is because it's the same lambda which is active and you can see that both are in the same event so that basically means it did not spawn up a new um, lambda instance because the image is exactly the same now in order to overwrite my image i am going to click on the deploy new image browse for images and select the v2 version because that's the new version we want to deploy so let me save that the save takes a while because it needs to download from the ecr into the lambda repository because lambda has its own internal repository so it's going to take a bit longer the updating is going to be there for some time a few moments later so the upload is successful now i can trigger my file upload so that i can see the new change getting updated so let me upload the file so the file upload got succeeded i'll go back to my log group i can see one particular log stream let me come back i don't see anything here so let me go back again yep i can see my new log stream here now if i click on the new log stream i should be able to see welcome to tech primer so if you notice here welcome to tech primers is printed so this is the version 2 which we deployed i'll just summarize what we just did we created a python program and we containerized that particular program using docker the program is going to read the s3 file and it's going to print the json message it's going to extract the message from the json and printing it in the console we uploaded it into the ecr registry from the cli using the console we created a aws lambda we configured the ecr we also added a trigger for it from the s3 bucket we created a s3 bucket we uploaded a file to the s3 bucket we assigned the lambda role for the read policy from the s3 bucket which internally was able to read the file and then print it in the logs finally we monitored it using cloudwatch obviously this is just a kickstarter for you to get started with containers and how you can leverage your elastic container registry inside amazon to upload and then use it inside lambdas do try it out in your personal account or in your professional account and let me know what are the challenges which you face and what are the things you would like amazon to improve as always, if you like the video, go ahead and like it. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe to it. Meet you again in the next video. Thank you very much.